Our next topic here in chemistry is acid-base titrations. Another name for acid-base titrations is simply acid-base neutralization reactions. So when you add an acid and a base together, typically you neutralize, they cancel each other out, and the solution becomes neutral if they're added in the right amounts with the right concentrations. The reason why that works is because typically an acid will create hydrogen ions, positive hydrogen ions, in a solution. Bases, however, will create hydroxide ions. And so when a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion come together, they tend to form a water molecule. And so they, they, um, when you put an acid and a base together, they basically cancel each other out because you make the hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions disappear, turning back into water, making the acid less acidic and making the base less basic. So the reason why we want to learn how to do that is not so much to neutralize acids, not for their own right to neutralize them, but to learn how to figure out the molarity or the concentration of the acid or the base that we're dealing with. And that's typically why we do acid-base titrations. So, for example, let's say we start out with a known volume of hydrochloric acid, but we do not know the molarity. We, don't, we do not know the concentration of the uh, chlorine ion in this solution. So we don't know how much hydrochloric acid or how concentrated hydrochloric acid is. So we uh, understand that that means that we're going to have hydrogen ions and we're going to have chlorine ions in the solution, like we have depicted here. And we also know that when this dissociate, we'll have just as many hydrogen ions as we had hydro hydrochloric ions when we started with, hydrogen chloride, I should say, when we started with. So for one mole of hydrogen ions in the solution, we'll have one mole of hydrogen chloride. So now, how do we know what the concentration was? Well, what we can do is we can start adding a base to it, slowly, and slowly as we add a base to the original solution, some of the hydroxide ions that we're going to introduce in the solution will be canceling out the hydrogen ions, and we're going to be neutralizing the solution. Now, if we put in an indicator, what we call phenolphthalein is one of those indicators, which is colorless when it's acidic and becomes pink when it turns basic. So the way we do that is we add a little bit of an indicator, not too much, but enough. And then we start adding base to it, and we keep adding base to it, one drop at a time. And finally, when the last drop makes it completely neutral, when there's the same amount of hydrogen ions as there's hydroxide ions, so they can cancel each other out, then adding one more drop to it will turn the whole solution pink. So it doesn't take a lot of changing from neutral to basic to turn the whole thing pink. And then we stop and then we will figure out how much exactly we added to the solution. Now, how does that really work numerically? Well, let's say, for example, that we start out with a solution that was, had a molarity of 0.1 moles. Let's say we didn't know that that was the case. And let's say we took 100 milliliters of solution and we put it right there. So we'll put in 100 milliliters of that solution and the molarity was 0.1. Now, with a base like sodium hydroxide, every mole of uh, sodium hydroxide produces one mole of the hydroxide ion. So it's, again, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. And let's say that we start with a pretty uh, strong base. Let's say that the molarity of the base, the sodium hydroxide, was two moles. So two moles is 20 times as concentrated as 0.1 moles. So let's write that down. So two, uh, two moles per liter, that's the molarity, is equal to 20 times 0.1 moles per liter. So that's the molarity of the acid. Which means that you only need 1 20th as much of this solution to neutralize 100 milliliters of that. So what is 1 20th of 100 milliliters? So 1 20th of 100 milliliters is only 5 milliliters. Which means that since the base is 20 times as concentrated as the acid, we only need 120 as much to neutralize it. So if we start with a 100 milliliter uh, sample of the hydrochloric acid at 0.1 molar molarity, and we add 5 milliliters of a base which is 20 times as concentrated, if you want to say it that way, then you know that they will cancel each other out. So we sit there and we start adding drop by drop by drop, and then it turns out after we add 5 milliliters, it's about 10 drops per milliliter, so if you add about 50 drops, the 51st drop will probably turn this whole solution pink, and then we know, 
oh, we stop at that moment, we measure exactly how much of the volume in our pipette we've put into the solution. If it's five milliliters, we know the molarity is two, then we know, aha, that means we start with 100 milliliters, we only added 120th as much, which means the molarity of the original sample is only 120th as much as that. Don't worry if you don't quite get all the details of that, I just want to give it to you as a simple example to give you the basics of what acid-based titrations are. In the next several videos, we'll do some examples so that you can feel comfortable and solidified in your understanding of how that works. But at least, that's a good start to give you some basic principles of what acid-based titrations are.